Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to VHB Engines. <laughs> I didn't forget about you guys. I didn't. I know it's going to be well after midnight by the time you guys see this, but uh, so let me explain what happened. Um, I went out, as you guys follow me elsewhere know, I went out on the mission and I've got a whole bunch of stuff to do this packaging shit. Um, to ship this block whether the guy I'm talking to buys it or not doesn't matter I wanted to do it and anyway so this morning this morning being like two o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> when I got out of bed no, it wasn't that late it's close to it though anyway that earlier this afternoon I got on uh, fucking YouTube because I called FedEx I got on YouTube because I called FedEx and FedEx told me that the, the flat rate shipping that I had been looking at was only for people who had business accounts. The flat rate is only for people who has a business account with FedEx. I don't have a business account, so I don't get those rates. So, um, I, they told me they can give me a quote on the phone if I can tell them the dimensions of the box and the amount, uh, or the, how much it weighs. So, um, I went out to Home Depot, I looked for a box, I got a box, the box wound up being too small. I got tape, I got bubble wrap, I got plastic wrap uh, I made a video I made a video already I'll just you know you're pretty sure you guys have seen it before you even seen this and uh, but anyway the whole thing is I fucking spent a whole bunch of time out there getting that the last bit of the engine prepped to wrap it up put it in a box now I'm here we're gonna talk about high compression turbo builds now again this is like the VTEC thing it's not gonna be like super technical but we're gonna talk about you know the whole myth about you have to run low compression to do boost well I think if you stop for a second you think well how is it that I can boost a stock engine but I have to do low compression if I do a rebuild uh, that's because you don't you don't have to go low compression um, <clears throat> it's just that everybody says you know you gotta do low compression because you know that's what the internet says and the internet says low compression is safe low compression is safe so yeah, low compression is safer, meaning it's, uh, low compression is more forgiving to mistakes than um, than high compression is. Like if like if you lean out a little bit in your tune, whatever, for whatever reason you have a problem and you lean out, maybe an injector goes bad or whatnot, you're not getting enough fuel. Uh, at low compression, it, does, it doesn't necessarily mean that's the end of your engine. With high compression, there's a better chance that it is the end of your engine. So you got to be on point with your shit. When you're uh, when you're tuning high compression, and the tuner has to be good with his shit because he has to know when to throttle back and all that good stuff during the tune, or he can blow you up on the dyno. Uh, with that being said, though, I always recommend if you want to make the most out of uh, out of your build, you want the best response, especially you know, especially if you're going to run a smaller turbo, um, you want to have a higher compression. And when I say high compression, I don't necessarily generally say mean like high ass compression. When I'm talking about high compression, I'm talking about higher than stock, you know, or or higher than what that engine would be stock. So I guess it's you know it should be like mild compression, 10, 11, 1, you know, around that area. Uh, as far as me, if I were to ever intentionally build a high compression engine, I don't think I'd ever want to do more than 11.5, and just because even in a 11.5 is kind of high, it'll get you some good power. So when I talk about high compression, I don't mean slap in some 14 to 1 pistons and boost that. Uh, it could probably be done. As a matter of fact, I think I saw a J-Series build not too long ago where they did do something like that. They put some fucking high-ass compression pistons in there and they made like 700 horsepower. I'll leave a link up here because I talked about that in a J-Series build. Um, so anyway, um, when you don't have to build your shit low compression. As a matter of fact, I usually recommend building building your engine close to stock compression as you can. Now, Wiseco, and I'm pretty sure CP and all the other ones, they give different compressions uh, for low compression side. You could go really low, excuse me, you can go 881, or like I think their higher compression ones are 951. And 951, if, if you're gonna go with a forged piston setup, I'd grab the 95, 95 to one. If you can get a little higher than that, uh, then I'd grab that too. Um, if you're gonna rebuild, if you're going to rebuild like using OEM parts like I like to do, then I would say maybe you could bump up your compression a little bit with the um, with a piston swap and, and boost that. 
Uh, personally, I'd like to. What I'd like to do would be a stock mild compression build. Maybe do another PR3 block with a B18 head, and maybe use like a, a medium or a smaller turbo. So that way it's fucking snappy. Like it fucking responds right away. Like uh, not waiting for VTEC. The compression is spooling up that fucking uh, turbo faster. All that torque. I think that'd be a really fun build. I think I would definitely like to do that. But um, I'm still not making enough money where I can build as many cars as I would like to play with. So it'll be on a checklist for something to do in the future. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I guess uh, that, that's pretty much it. You know, <laughs> really, really quick conversation. But uh, a lot of people ask me about high compression. And a lot of people say, oh, I thought you couldn't build high compression boost. It's not bad. So that is just a quick answer to say yes or no, you can't. You don't have to do um, you don't have to do low compression all the time. And actually, I would not recommend you go on super low because I had somebody with a similar build to mine that went super low on compression. My B16, my old B16, and it didn't make as much power as my shit did. Um, it was within the same uh, ballpark area, but my my uh, I went into full boost a lot sooner. I spooled up a lot faster. So if you if you're gonna build, uh, definitely play with the ideas like if you're going to keep it uh, below 500 horsepower and stuff like that and like I don't, I don't think you should build super low compression now am I saying the don't use low compression I'm not saying that at all because I've still built plenty of engines where I use low compression pistons I'm just saying if you're going to make a choice or, and you're going to buy brand new you don't necessarily have to get the lowest shit you can find if you especially if you're buying brand new like if you're like me I like to scavenge and buy used shit so I buy whatever the fuck I can come across um, if you're looking for if you're looking for and you can't find a strong aftermarket piston, um, you can look at NPRs, uh, Nip and Racing pistons. They're cast and they're usually cast copies of uh, ITR, CTR, B18. I mean, you know, it's the, it's the exact same setup as a as an OEM piston, just much stronger and floating, which is the most important thing because you want to be able to use H beams. So NPR pistons are definitely a way to go if you're looking for a mild compression turbo build. And I've used them before, and um, not I didn't see horsepower numbers from that. I was just told it made 380 out of a B16. And um, there you go. I mean, I think that if you're looking for a cheap, brand new, or close to new build, and you want to use uh, new stuff, then NPR is definitely a way to go if you're going to stay under 500. All right, guys. Uh, Super quick video here. Um, I might upload this one straight from my phone. No, no, I don't need to. I, I was going to say because I'm doing this right now. <laughs> Let's see if you can see it. You see? Yay! <laughs> Sneak peek. Maybe you actually are going to see this one first before that one because I can just upload this straight away to, to YouTube. So anyway, um, yeah. If you're new to the channel, uh, guys, uh, click on DHB Engine somewhere in, on the page below. Go into the channel and search or scan over the playlist that I have. All of the videos are organized in a very well-described playlist to help better help you find the video you need to answer your questions that you have. Um, if you uh, if you look in the description below, all my social media links are there. I have Facebook set there for uh, channel updates and news that I update pretty much daily. Um, Instagram is on there for all, any pictures I do or that I'm taking while I'm doing my video shooting or my projects. So that way you guys generally know when I'm about to upload something because I put the pictures there but while I'm uploading the video. Also, Twitter and Snapchat is below. Uh, Twitter and Snapchat I use to make one uh, two to three minute videos updates that will cover stuff that's related to the channel but not stuff that I want to make a video for YouTube for you know uh, so also uh, if you guys are following me on social media I don't really follow too many people back but everybody who follows me on snapchat gets a follow back and I do watch what y'all post and I will put in my two cents every once in a while if I see you're stuck on something um, if you got anything out of the video uh, I appreciate you giving a thumbs up. Likes help spread the videos around YouTube. And I hope that you find something uh, enough in the channel to make you want to stick around for updates. And so subscribe if that's the case. Uh, thanks guys for watching. And peace.